Hey guys, me Rebel Chris Tomer here. Let's talk a little bit of mountain weather. I thought this would be a pretty exciting time. We got a uh, what's going to be a memorable uh, May snowstorm on the way to parts of Colorado and also New Mexico. So there's a lot to discuss with this. Let's just start up at Winter Park. I mean, it is a beautiful start to the day. Wouldn't even suspect you've got uh, a large May snowstorm coming, but uh, sunshine up there. I believe Winter Park is still open for skiing. So is a basin. Uh, I believe Loveland is as well. Uh, but man, this is going to be a good one. Let me uh, just show you my bullet points here. Here's what I'm thinking overall. So this is a panhandle hooker storm system. It's going to come in from the south. It's kind of set up in that Albuquerque low position. And then it's going to push a pretty deep easterly wind back across Denver in the front range, right up through the foothills and up to the top of the Continental Divide. I really think this has a preference for divide east. So if you were to go west of the Continental Divide to Summit County, Vail Pass, you're going to get less, significantly less accumulation. A lot of the flow with these type of storms is preferred divide east. Um, and overall, the best snow accumulation is going to be above 9,000 feet of elevation uh, where it's colder. Now, at times, especially into Tuesday night, the snow level is probably going to drop down to potentially 6,500 to 7,000 feet, which means some places like Castle Rock, Monument Hill, the foothills um, to the west and south of Denver will probably see the rain change over to snow. And there could be some accumulation in those areas above 6,500 feet. The biggest winners out of this are going to be Pikes Peak. Wait till you see the numbers on that. The San Grita Cristos, the Wet Mountain. So basically, higher elevations right up to the Continental Divide and east. Um, so we'll look at all that. I want to show you the time height forecast for Pikes Peak, and it is deep. So what you're looking at here is forecast humidity in the atmosphere, which is represented. The higher humidities are in green. And this is a 72-hour forecast, which you read from right to left. So notice the green increases um, through the 6th. And there's some there today on the 5th as well, especially this afternoon. But it definitely increases on the 6th. Um, all the way through the night of the 6th and stays pretty deep into the morning of the 7th as well before it starts to thin out. So with this and you kind of look at the, the wind direction, that's going to be a pretty deep upslope wind for Pikes Peak. So uh, a pretty big benefit there. Now looking down into the uh, the San Grita Cristos, this is Blanca Peak, one of the 14ers down there. And it is also very deep and it might be a little bit deeper, but nonetheless looking for significant amounts of uh, snowfall up on Blanca, Little Bear, Ellingwood, um, and then up towards Lindsay, and then pretty much you know, all through the Crest Stones and then over into the Wet Mountains as well above 9,000. And so um, the, the wind here is is pretty good. It's probably not as, and here's we'll go back to Pikes, it's probably not as efficient as Pikes, but it's pretty close. Let me just show you the pattern. You may have heard about this. Um, so this is called an Omega Block. And what it tends to do is it tends to slow things down in the atmosphere like a like an accident on the highway. It, it really bottlenecks things. But what ends up it ends up doing is slowing down the areas of low pressure, which are bookending that high pressure. And so those big bowling ball areas of low pressure tend to sit and spin for a while. And if you can get them positioned in the right area, you can produce and generate upslope in mountainous environments. And that's what we're going to see take place. So let's look at, um, I want to go back to the jet stream, or not to the jet stream, but to the radar and show you what's happening right now. So you can see an area of moisture up in Montana and also some moisture down in southern Utah in the four corners. Let me take you down there. So that's the start of the area of low pressure. This is Colorado, New Mexico. The moisture is starting to come up from the south. Um, but what's going to happen is they'll take you back. The area above of significance up to the north in Montana and to the south are going to merge. So as the low comes up, the front will come in from the north um, out of Montana, and the two will merge over Colorado and New Mexico. Looking at water vapor satellite imagery, so on this, your moisture is in the whites and the blues, your drier air is in the oranges and the reds. So you've got your area of low pressure here, um, and you've also got um, a front up here coming to the south. So again, both of these are going to merge and generate a larger area of low pressure over the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma. And that's what's going to drive that easterly wind into Denver and the Front Range and across all of the high peaks up and down the Front Range divide east. And so what that will do 
is generate very heavy precipitation divide east in Colorado and beyond. All right, so looking at some of the, uh, look at the jet stream forecast on this. Um, so we've got a giant dip in the jet stream. This is uh, this is early today, towards the uh, the midday hour today. And what you're looking at is a big dip, a big trough in the uh, the jet stream, really corresponding to that, uh, that blocking pattern I just showed you. So your area of low pressure is sitting at the base of this, and it's going to be slowly moved from the four corners towards Albuquerque and the Panhandles. Let me roll this ahead in time. All right, here we are late today, early tomorrow. Here's Tuesday in the morning. Everything is still coming together. The front from the north now has merged with the area of low pressure, and you're in the, this is really the peak of the precipitation um, on the 6th, which is going to be Tuesday, and, it, uh, and it's pretty intense all the way through the night, and then it lets up in the morning hours on Wednesday the 7th, and then eventually the low moves away, and that's the end of it. Um, let's look at uh, forecast snowfall over time. So we'll start this at, um, we'll start it early today, and you've already got precipitation and snow happening like I showed you on radar over the four corners and up in Montana. So on this, your lightest accumulations are in the blue colors, those are under three inches, and then the greens are three to six, yellow is six plus, red is going to be 10 plus. All right, so let's move it ahead in time. All right, here we are late tonight. Notice some of the snow intensifying as the low moves in. It's also the front coming down from the south, so you got snow developing over Wyoming, um, some in the high Uintas, and eventually a little bit over the Wasatch as well. But it's building north through uh, Colorado from the southern mountains into the I-70 corridor. All right, here we are early tomorrow morning. Here we are at lunchtime tomorrow. This is lunchtime Tuesday. This is really the peak for a lot of Colorado, New Mexico. Um, here we are late um, on Tuesday. So notice in Colorado, we're looking predominantly at the reds or deeper, which means it's going to be well over 10 inches. In most places, you're looking at probably 10 to 20, but then there are bullseyes like Pikes Peak, like the Sand Grays, like the Wet Mountains, where we're going to see over two feet of accumulation. In some cases, potentially three feet or more um, in some of these places. All right, here we go. This is early on Wednesday. Notice the accumulation is slowing down. Um, so there's early Wednesday, and then the low starts to move away. But that's an impressive-looking map, snow forecast map, um, for the 5th of May. Um, there are absolutely in places in Colorado over 3 feet um, and a few bullseyes. Most places are 10 to 20 on the divide and east. Okay, let me show you what I'm thinking as far as accumulation. So I've zoomed this in um, to basically the four. Three to eight inches, more in Bryan Head. Um, now look at Colorado. So the biggest numbers, southern Colorado, kind of bending up through the sand grays, the wets, and then right on top the condo divide in east. Again, 10 to 20, Breck, and that's some of that spillover in Breck, but you're on the lower end. 10 to 20 up through Loveland, A Basin, Keystone, Winter Park. Um, and Long's Peak, and then less as you go up towards Cameron Pass, and a lot less as you go west of the Continental Divide, four to six through Vail, Snowmass, Aspen, Crested Butte. Could see a foot over Monarch, Silverton, 16 or so over Wolf Creek, and 30 to 40 down through Angel Fire, Taos at the very highest of elevations. Now, Pikes, I've got uh, 48 inches, so you're looking at four feet, and I wouldn't be surprised if it hits 50 some indication of that. And then what I don't have labeled are the sand grays, so like the Crest Stones, Blanca Peak. I think you're looking at 24 inches solid, maybe up to three feet in a couple of very high elevation spots. Again, the key is going to be above to be to be above 9,000. So those are the big numbers that are coming with this uh, this uh, this May uh, snowstorm. I thought it'd be very interesting to do this update. You know, you don't often see these big type of storms, and so we'll see how this plays out. But this could be a big one for parts of uh, Colorado and New Mexico. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.